Do you know about the three main types of vessels? But of course, it's going to get more complicated than that. We're going to go ahead now and give these other vessels names, give more names, and then we're actually going to look at the histology more closely, and that's going to help us understand their function of all these vessels. So we've got the heart here. The aorta is coming right from the heart, and that's going to be a type of elastic artery. Not just the aorta, but anything that's kind of near the heart. This is all a spectrum of transition, but the closest to the heart, we've got elastic arteries. They're stretchy. They have elastic tissue in them. Um, they are going to stretch, and that's going to be important for, for blood pressure. We'll come back to that. These are also called conducting arteries. These branch and become more muscular. We've got muscular arteries. Further branching, we've got arterioles, little arteries, and these are also muscular. So both of these allow for vasodilation and vasoconstriction. So that smooth muscle is going to be important for um, regulating blood pressure. So these arterioles are also called resistance vessels. We'll talk about resistance and its importance to opposing um, flow and its involvement in pressure. The muscular arteries also provide some resistance, but arterioles are the main location. That's why they're called resistance vessels. Um, and again, it's a transition between all these, these types. So there's not like one dividing point where you go from muscular artery to arterial. Okay, what else do we have there? Let's go to our capillaries. So you know these are capillaries, our exchange vessels. I'm not sure I can write this low. I'm gonna write it right on top here. Capillaries. And there's a couple other structures here we'll come back to. I'll go ahead and label them. I don't think I have it as a key term yet, but we will. This is a precapillary sphincter. A sphincter is a ring of tissue that muscular tissue that can constrict. Um, so we're going to see the function of these sphincters that are at the beginning of the capillaries. I'm um, not going to label all these. We've got then venules is the first in the series of veins, just like arterioles are little arteries, venules are little veins. Where well, they're going to have small veins, and we're going to have large veins. We'll see some difference in vein structure a little bit, um, but basically they get vessels get bigger as they go towards the heart again. These veins are also called capacitance vessels. They're really important for um, maintaining a large amount of blood. A lot of blood is in those vessels, their reservoirs, we'll come back to that idea as well. That's why they're called. Um, so the other thing that's shown on here, you might notice, is this green stuff. What's this green stuff? This is part of the lymphatic system. So this is, and I'll show you, why don't I go ahead and make it green. Lymphatic system, you can already see there is an interaction between lymphatic system H there, and our blood vessels, our circulatory system. We'll look at this a little bit more next week. Um, here, this would be large vessels. This is a lymph node. You know about lymph nodes, right? You can sometimes feel them when you're sick um, along here, but there are lots of places. Um, and the, the vessels have different shapes. Um, actually, one more thing I'll label here. These are lymphatic capillaries. So for now, I just want you to see that the lymphatic system is directly connected, right? That tube comes from um, these, this vein right here, and then also has connections with our capillaries at the level of our tissues. This is gonna be important for tissue um, microcirculation. We'll come to this next week. Okay, that's an overview of the types of vessels and we're gonna do histology and function next.